Hi, and welcome to part eight of my automating Active Directory with PowerShell tutorial series. Uh, so in the last few videos, we went over uh, multiple steps in order to be able to create our new users. Before I actually start this video today, I just want to make a uh, slight corrections on the last video uh, where we were validating the OU names. Um, I came to my attention that I actually did the OU name equals OU name dot physical delivery office name. This should actually reference OU property. Um, just this way, if you change the OU property down the line, it'll take the correct name to put in there. Um, when I was doing some tests, I had noticed that. So that's the first change. Um, the second change that I'd want you guys to do is to actually change the mapping of office to physical delivery office name to actually just office to office. Um, I have noticed that using the physical, physical delivery office name isn't quite um, as good as I thought it would be. Um, so I'm changing it to office. It actually gives a little bit more flexibility to the script later on especially once we're syncing users. So I just wanted to make sure uh, that I make those changes uh, so you guys can see those. Uh, we'll be making some other edits uh, to the other parts of the script, but those actually kind of come with um, the, further, uh, the further commands that we actually have. Um, so one of them, uh, as we know, is going to be, uh, well, as we, probably don't know yet, but in here, what we're actually going to want to do, uh, because we pass in the domain and unique ID to this get user sync data, what we want to add here is actually just domain, and we're going to reference domain, and then unique ID, and then we're going to put the unique ID in there. This is just going to add those two variables. Um, into that hash table, just so we have to pass in less parameters later on. Um, I've noticed that that actually does come in handy quite a bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started here um, in our video of creating our users. So the first thing we're going to want to do uh, when creating a user is we need to find the username. Now, we already have the function for that, so that's going to be great. Um, we already have that. We have new username. We pass in the given name, the surname, and the domain. Uh, so now that we have that figured out, so what we're going to do here, is we're just going to create a function. We're going to call it uh, create new user open and close curly brackets. We're going to do commandlet binding. And then we're going to start the parameter set. So what we do know about this is um, we're going to be passing in this user sync data. Uh, just for my sake, I'm just going to name this user sync data just so it's easier for me to remember. So we're going to add a parameter and we're going to make it mandatory. And we are simply going to be passing in a, um, it's a hash table. And we are going to call it our user sync data. So we're going to be passing our entire table in. And we're going to see why in just a moment. So what we're going to want to do is the first step, uh, like I said, is be creating the username but before we can do that because we're going to be passing in tons of users we're going to specify which users are new so we're going to add a new users equals user sync data dot new and then we're going to add a for each we're going to put new user in new users and we are going to go ahead and put something in this loop to tell us that it works. We're just going to do a write host. And we are just going to put in new, uh, new user dot given name. 
And let's do create new user. User sync data. All right, let's just comment out this line here. So let's go ahead and let's run this. All right, so if we pass in, all right, so why doesn't this here? So let's just see what's in our user sync data. All right, so we have no new users, and this is because I did some testing before starting this video, actually. Uh, so let me just go ahead and actually delete these users that I've created uh, because I do not want these because I want to show you guys that they will be created. All right, so now if we do this whole script again. All right, so we do get into the loop and we actually see all the given names of our users that we're going to be creating. So now that we have that, what I like to do um, in these types of functions is actually a write verbose. Now this is only going to show up on the screen if you enter the verbose parameter in your uh, commandlet call. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this as creating user, and I'm just going to put um, new user dot given name and new user dot surname. And then we are going to go ahead and we're going to try to find a username. So we have new username, given name, and we're going to pass in the new user given name. We're going to pass the surname here. And we are also going to pass the domain. Now, you're going to see I'm not passing in the domain because it's actually in our user sync data variable. So that's why I added that into that get user data sync. It's just one less parameter to pass in. You just pass in the user sync data, and everything is there. So that's going to be perfect. So now that we have our username, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another write verbose. Um, and then I'm going to add with username. And we're going to be able to see what this username is now. Now, if we just do this and we just run this here, Of course, there's a typo because I didn't copy paste correctly. All right, so we do have here now, we have our output because we're running it verbosely. Um, so we get creating users, Matthew Wilkins, we get the username for it. So that's perfect. So we're already getting our usernames back for our users. So now all we really need to do is uh, make sure that the OU that they need to be placed in exists, create a password for them, and then create them. So there's very not many steps left once we break this down uh, quite a bit here. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that that OU exists. Um, so kind of similarly to our validate OU function, we kind of already have the code for this. Um, so we have the this if. So let's go ahead and let's take that here and let's paste that in here. Now I could rewrite this whole thing, but that would definitely take a little bit more time. Uh, so we have the if not get organizational name, uh, organizational unit filter name and then what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to change this to new user 
And then we are going to want to do a dot. And then we need the OU property. Now, we're not passing that in because in user data sync, it doesn't have the OU property. So actually, let's go back up here. And in our user data sync, because we are not actually passing in our OU uh, property here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add that parameter in right now. Uh, OU property. And then we are going to add that to the hash table. And then in our call, we just need to add that as well now. Perfect. So now that we have that, so let's just comment out this so it just doesn't give us any issues. Perfect. Now we can clear this out. So now that we have our new user here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to wrap this in some parentheses just to make it a little bit easier here. So we have new user dot, and then we're going to want to pick user sync data dot OU property. And then we are not passing the domain, so but we are passing the domain through the uh, through the user sync data. So let's do user sync data dot domain. So that's perfect. And then what we're going to want to do is we're not going to want to create the organizational unit because that's we already have a function for that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw an error here, and we're just going to put the or Organizational unit for us. Uh, we're just going to put this here. All right, so that should be good. And we are just going to want to go ahead and actually assign this to OU. So we actually grab this. So if we do this, It would definitely help if I take I take that whole line, just go like this. So why isn't this working? So oftentimes with PowerShell, you're just going to have to really kind of debug as you kind of go along here. So we don't have anything in our new user. OK, perfect. So that seems to be actually running OK now. So if I actually just run the whole thing again, everything runs OK. Perfect. Not sure what those error messages were for, but they don't seem to be happening, which I didn't think we should get any errors out of this. But let's keep going. Uh, so now we have the OU. So if I grab the OU here, which will be for 
Um, of course, that's not really going to work because this isn't a function. Um, but that's OK. So what we can do here is we can actually just do the right verbose. This is why I really enjoy the right verbose. It just really gives you that ability, kind of like the print as a debug function almost, uh, which I know isn't super recommended. But in cases like this, it is definitely very useful. Um, so let's just put in the OU there. And let's run this. All right, perfect. So we can actually see that we actually are grabbing the OU. So that is perfect. So we're grabbing the OU. We're creating the username. The only thing left to do is create a password and then create the user. So to create a password, we want it to be randomly generated. We want it to be fairly secure, obviously, because you don't want these accounts to be hacked before they're even given to the person. Um, so the way that I like to do this is actually by using a kind of like a class, you can say. Um, it's basically an assembly, a system web assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a add type here. And we're going to do assembly name. And we are going to put, we are going to add the assembly name of system.web. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a password with the class of system.web.security.membership. And then if you do colon colon, then we're going to do a generate password. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pass in inside the parentheses. We're going to create another set of parentheses. And we're going to do get random. And we're going to do minimum 8. Maximum, we're going to do 12. And then we're going to do comma 3 to make it a complex password. Um, so this is basically going to generate a random string for a password. It's going to have all sorts of weird characters in it. Um, it's going to be one of those generic robotic passwords that password uh, generators create. Um, but it's going to be in plain text. So right now, if we run this here, it'll run. And we get our password back as a whole bunch of weird characters. And then what we can do is we can do that secured password equals password and we are going to pipe that to convert to secure string and then we are going to put uh, we can actually do it the better way here string we're going to pass in password as plain text and then we're going to force the conversion. So once we do this line here, we are going to get our secure password, which is just going to be a system.security.secureString, which is perfect because that's the type that the new AD user takes. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to create a hash table called new AD uh, user params. And we're going to create that as a hash table. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put in all of our properties that we want to set. So we have employee ID, we have a given name, we have surname, we have name, we have Sam, account name, which is the username, we have user principal name, like the fully qualified name. Uh, then we have account password. We will also have a change password at logon here. We also have enabled title department. I'm just looking at ED on my other screen just to get all the different spots here. We have office, we have path. 
we have a confirm, and we have a server here. So let's put all these parameters in. So we're going to have a new user dot employee ID. And we already know that we're going to have a whole bunch of new users dot here. So the given name is going to be new user dot given name. Surname is going to be new user dot surname. Uh, now the name, I usually like to put this as the username. Uh, Sam account name is going to be once again, just the username. Uh, the user principal name is going to be a concatenation of the username. And then we're going to put the at symbol and then we're going to put in user sync data. Uh, user sync. Why is this not auto completing? Uh, da, da, da. User sync data dot domain. That should work. And then the account password will be the secured password. And change password at next logon will be set to true. This means the user will have to change their password at next at their next at their first login in this case. We're going to set the enable this true because we want the account to be active. Uh, the title will be new user dot title. The department will be new user dot department. The office will be new user dot office because we've changed that. The path will be the OU dot distinguished name. I have to check the spelling on that here. Distinguished name. Uh, the confirm, we're going to set that to false because we don't want to prompt to confirm that. And then the server, we're going to set that to user sync data dot domain. So that should be perfect here. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pass that to new AD, new AD user. And we're going to pass that was the at new AD user params. And we're going to do a write verbose, and we're going to put created user, and we're going to put in uh, new user dot given name here, and then we're going to put new user dot surname. Emp ID, we're going to just put in their employee ID here. Uh, new user dot employee ID. And then we're going to put in their username. And then what we're going to want to finally add is we're going to finally add the password, but we're going to put the clear text version here so we actually know what it is so we can send it to the user. Now what you'd want to do is typically log this to a log file so you can give it to your user or if you're running this from um, from the actual uh, ISE uh, manually, you will be able to give it to them as well. Uh, so that should be good here. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to wrap this entire thing in a try catch statement like always. So let's do that. And then we're going to do a close curly bracket catch, open and close, and then write error, grab our passed in 
exception message. All right, so let's go ahead and let's try this out here and see if it works for us. All right, so it seems that one of them did not get created because the password did not meet the length here. So what we can do, depending on what your uh, securities are, they might be a bit longer. So I'm just gonna set this to 12 and 15 and then run this again and that should be fine. Perfect, so it did create the last one there. So now if we go into our system in Vancouver, we actually see our users. In Toronto, uh, we see our users here. One of them is uh, not enabled here. Let's just go check out all the rest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete all these users once again. And we're just gonna run this one last time here, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. Perfect, no errors on that time. And let's go see what we got here. So if we go into Dubai, we have our two users. In New York, we have our four users. In Toronto, we have our one user. And then in Vancouver, we have our three users. So that is perfect. That is really how to create a user in Active Directory by automating it with those files there. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this function, just cut it out of there, put it in order here. Perfect. So, and then we have create new user. So what I like to do for this is actually put this validate before getting the user data, uh, the user sync data. So this is the order that I would actually uh, look at it right now. Um, this is really pretty much it for creating users. Um, so let me just go through what we have so far. Because uh, we've done quite a quite a bit uh, today, uh, so I'm just going to go over uh, the create new user function. And feel free to keep watch this video multiple times because uh, this is definitely quite a complex uh, function. Uh, so definitely just keep getting it right, uh, keep keep watching it, keep coding it. Uh, if you get some errors, just watch the video. Uh, slowly and just kind of go over each step again and again uh, and it should all work out for you guys. Uh, so what we have here is we have this create new user. We're taking in the user sync data. We're getting all the new users out of that user sync data and what we're doing is for each new user we're going ahead and we're creating a username for it we're getting the organizational unit that it belongs in based on the OU property in the user sync data. And then what we're doing is we're creating a password. Um, I did my password here at the end would be 12 characters minimum, 15 characters maximum, and a complex password. And then we're just converting that to a secure string, which is what Active Directory takes when you're creating a user. And then we are putting in all the parameters into a hash table that we want to use. So we have our employee ID, given name, surname, name, same account name, user principal name, account password, change password at next at logon, enabled title, department, office, path, confirm, and server. And then we are passing those parameters to the new AD user commandlet, which will create the AD user. And then we just have a couple right verbose um, for logging purposes or for debugging purposes in our case. Um, feel free to add logging to this. Um, I'll cover that in a later video um, where I might kind of refactor this code and add some logging to it. Um, but for now, this should really give you all the functionalities you really want. Um, so right now, uh, We've got the create users. So the only part that's really left now 
uh, to automate this Active Directory is um, syncing our users. So the users that already exist, make sure that all their information is up to date, make sure they're in the right department, they didn't change jobs, making sure they haven't had a name change. If they have a name change, let's change their name and let's update their username. Uh, because as we know, our usernames right now is last name, first initial. So if they change their last name because they get married, divorce, anything like that, or just want a name change, uh, we can do that. Uh, so we're going to be going over that in the next video. I'm going to be showing you how to create a function um, that will generate a new username or give back the same username if that username still works for the user. And then we're going to be syncing our users in the video after that. And then after that, we're going to be going into uh, the users that have gotten fired or quit, and we are going to be disabling them uh, and deactivating their accounts. I will see you on the next video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for the next video. I will see you on the next video.